So going back to our uh, create set value timer, um, and I know in that video I did discuss, you know, you could do this with a thread, and you absolutely could. But to me, it was more that I thought about it later, especially more so when I was editing the video and thought, oh, I might, you know, hit that later. Um, using a thread for this didn't make any sense. Because I don't like the idea of in the middle of a thread being executed, you would kill it or terminate it would actually be the correct term for that. Um, and thus, you would need almost a global value or, you know, an event or something like that. Um, or we would be better off actually creating a module that, ha you know, that is um, an actual more so, a, you know, an object that you can create separate instances of. So that way you could call a, you know, terminate set value thread. Um, and then that would tell the thread to kill itself at the end of its one of its loops or something like that. Um, that's getting a little more complicated. If you really want to see something like that, uh, let me know. We might try that in one of our tutorials on, uh, you know, creating objects. Um, but again, I just feel like, it, you know, it's just so much better to use a timer in that kind of instance that that's what I'd rather do. Um, but what I did want to touch on was the, you know, the concept that your first approach may not always be the best approach. Um, or the most simplistic, and then, you know, the idea that there are tons of ways to do things. So, like with our set value timer here, we didn't really need to use these read and write functions like this, um, because we're not actually, you know, to have the hard-coded value, we would. Um, but if all we're doing is really just reading from one address and writing to another address, uh, we could just actually have a parameter taken that's the value length and then this way It doesn't matter whether it's a float or integer. We just need to take four bytes from one Area in memory and copy that to the four bytes in another area of memory Given the fact that whether it's an integer or float, you know everything underlying is going to be bytes more or less um, technically binary, but at any rate uh, as far as cheat engine is concerned, or, or you are concerned, it's it's all bytes. Um, so that is just another way we could go about doing this. Um, and I just kind of wanted to touch on that, just you know, again show that you know no one's gonna think of the best way of doing something the first time around. And sometimes, if you do think of a better way or a different way that you want to do it that you think will work better for what you want to do. There's nothing wrong with that just to try it out. Here we could even make it a separate function. So that way we still have our function that'll take a hard-coded value, but then we have a separate one here that'll take, you know, only two addresses. And then and a value length. And sit and write to that value based on that. Um, here we could start with value length equals four would be you know I'm thinking would be our default and it's you know not uncommon for me to it's it's not always the best thing because admittedly you can run into errors here um, if you start trying to modify code in this kind of way but uh, there are plenty of times where you don't want to have to retype every little thing and so you'll start clearing stuff out and really in this case actually we could just go ahead and get rid of all of this right now um, but sometimes again you just don't want to rewrite every little thing so you just do something kind of quick real quick to start messing with it in this case all we really need to do is just use read and write bytes um, or write bytes and read bytes And then write bytes actually takes multiple, um, you know, there, there's different ways to call it. So, yeah, right here. 
Um, so you can pass it a table, and we could still set it up that way because Read Bytes uh, does allow you to return as a table. Um, but it can also, you can just give each byte as one of the arguments. So there's really no reason why you need to do that in this kind of scenario. Um, So here we just need our read address and then our value length. Um, so again, that's, you know, you can kind of see why sometimes rethinking how you did something isn't a terrible idea because, you know, this, uh, but, you know, the main thing here is if you remember the length of our first function before we were checking for, you know, an address versus value. It was a little bit shorter, but, I, you know, I'm thinking this is actually quite a bit shorter than that even. Just because, especially on our timer function here, we're not doing any checks, we're not doing anything other than reading and writing. Um, so again, this is just, a, you know, another way to do things. And, you know, that's where... Uh, a lot of times in programming in general, um, especially game hacking, you know, you really got to stop and think about how you're doing things. And just because you came up with a way to do it and it works doesn't mean that you should necessarily stop there. Um, sometimes keep thinking about it and just, you know, mull it over. Maybe not in that one sitting, but, you know, the next day you're, you know, making dinner and doing something that's a little more, you know, I don't want you to burn yourself or cut yourself, but at any rate... I know I tend to, you know, think about things at odd times, and then that's when it'll kind of pop in my head that, oh man, I can do this so differently, um, and that might be better. Um, and here we would, uh, this would definitely be faster because it's, you know, there's no checks, there's none of that. Um, you actually saw this code assembled essentially. You know, it, it would be quite a bit shorter than anything else that we wrote for this. Um, and then just to illustrate, I'll have to refine the values real quick. Okay, and funny enough, it seems like GDender keeps using the same, or at least it keeps getting assembled in the same address, even though it's not a static value or a static address. No, that's not right. Something is different. Yeah, okay. Um, so we just need to change our addresses that we're using here in our script, um, and then actually go back to that one that we're using an address each time and then also yeah we can just use our default there because it's only a value length of four um, so that's going to be our new write address and then this one will be our new read address and then if we go ahead and run that we can see that it does change to a you know an integer of 100 um, and we can even change our max health so to speak um, or at least what we're pretending is and then you know we can pass this step in the tutorial um, not that you ever I think you just have to change the value you don't have to freeze it uh, for this step but anyway um, just kind of wanted to go over this kind of thing slightly just because, just like I do sometimes leave in uh, when I make mistakes or do something kind of silly, just because I, I do think it is important to see that, you know, to see that people, you know, that I'm not perfect and by no means, even with all the knowledge I have, will I do it the best way every time. Um, no one will. I, I really don't care who you're talking about, you know. Um, I, I'm not going to get into that subject <laughs> anyway. Um, but at any rate, you know, there's just, there's always a different way to do things. Um, and just because the first way works, it's not necessarily what you want to stick with. You know, sometimes rethinking, you know, you don't want to rethink the wheel, but sometimes rethinking, you know, how you're doing something can work out in the end, you know, to make it simpler. Because I would definitely argue that this is super easy to read. Um, it's real easy to see exactly what's going on here, whereas when you're looking at this function, um, it's a little more complicated. You've got to, you know, actually sit here and go through, okay, what the hell is going on here? Um, you may even want to, you know, if you're really just starting out and not great at reading code, you might want to, you know, add comments to kind of remind yourself. Um, 
I'm terrible about not doing comments inside stuff like this because in my mind it's just proper naming conventions good naming conventions is where I like to do that uh, but even that's you know that, that's not the great way to do it. Uh, anybody that's ever done any real programming for any length of time um, and by real I just mean writing programs it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be your job can definitely tell you that you, when you come back to code that you haven't looked at in you know a year or multiple years um, those comments can make a huge difference in how you understand what's going on um, and I've run into that but I still just you know don't write comments a lot <laughs> and again you could um, you know add a comment here just to at least tell us what's going on with this function uh, you know the ins and outs of the parameters um, just like here we could tell how this one is you know either an address or a value um, but again I feel like this read address or value covers that um, and that's one of the reasons why I did change that when we were setting this up to do both and this way again you can actually see down here that you know okay at one point we were determining that it's either a value or an address based on whether it's a number you know so it's you know not super complicated unless it you know is readable but you do just have to know how to code a little bit to read this whereas comments would help somebody that you know has no knowledge of any of this and they'd still be able to kind of understand get the gist of um, so at any rate um, I just kind of wanted to retouch on these things I did want to mention um, free ER was the one who also pointed this out um, I did kind of think about that later but anyway um, I did want to thank him for pointing that out if I hadn't thought about it it was a good you know a good thing to mention um, and I do appreciate comments like that I don't take things like that you know criticism in general or even you know that was just more of a, a suggestion wouldn't even call it criticism but um, I do tend to take, take things like that decently not perfect I, you know I'm still human but um, but if I can, you know, something and a suggestion like that can help illustrate some key points better, I'll definitely, you know, take that into consideration and very much consider doing as, you know, as, a, you know, someone has suggested. Um, again, that's just learning to be uh, humble. I, I haven't really covered that here, but I do have a post on that kind of thing at, back at the uh, Fearless Forum. Um, forever because I'm uploading another video um, but there you know it's just the idea that there are you know uh, when learning anything you, you know you don't want to get stuck in your ways and think that what you're doing is perfect and if somebody points at something different don't get mad and you know just learn to take things in stride and understand it's not necessarily you know being critical of you it's just pointing out you know there are other ways you can do things um, anyway we'll go ahead and move on and on to the next